Any skirmish of misgiving or recognition I tell you were putting me on I tell you were putting me But you betrayed nothing Your face was untroubled As a fresh dirt over a grave Smiling at the window Singing to yourself you Covered up but we didn't say you Covered up but we didn't say Months ago you came to visit when we were still head over heels. It's chilling out to see you pretending like it didn't. I don't know what's real. I don't know how to feels like I'm looking through a two-way mirror. Can't see me, but I can see you. Spraying your corroborate my story for the record. I swear you love me too. I swear you love me too. I love it. Where are you coming to us from, Isaac? I'm in Missoula, Montana. In Missoula, in Missoula Montana. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And by you? the way, uh, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, cool. And, and by the way, Isaac, I mean, let's just start with this. I mean, Extra Medium, what a unique album. I mean, I just have to tell you, it was so enjoyable. All the tracks, just a fantastic piece. It's playful, but it's deep. The songwriting is on point. So congratulations on that. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and when you when you're following out Mariachi Static, right? Obviously, you did the the covers album, but Mariachi Static is really the follow up. I mean, to do it in this way, where you kind of like take what worked and you take it to another level. I mean, it's unbelievable. We we really loved it, man. Oh, great! I'm glad to hear it. You're one of the first, so love it. Um, that's yeah, it's awesome. Love it, love it, Isaac. By the way, and l- let me ask you this: when yeah. you when you sit down and you say, "Look, guys, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a new solo record." Um, you really, it really seems like you have a good time with each, right? Like whether you go through your discography or the best Westerns, it just sounds like you have a good time doing them. Am I correct or am I wrong? Yeah. Well, I don't really do anything that, um, I guess I don't really force it if it's not there. So that's why sometimes it takes a while. But, um, so yeah, every time I feel good about, um, all the songs that come out pretty much because I've um i've decided that they need to come out and um yeah i don't i don't there are no songs that really that i've written where i feel it's like it's a um i don't know it's a burden to to play them again yeah I, there's something in each of them that i i still really connect with yeah absolutely absolutely and, and it just it, it comes across absolutely isaac isaac and, and, and let me ask you this i mean i can't believe we're still talking about the the pandemic in 2020, we're in 2022 now. But I feel like for you, it was a little bit, the timing was a little challenging, right? Because you had this 16, uh, you know, you had this like 16, like multi-state tour ready to go. And um, you really were like shaken by it. I mean, you had to, you went back to Glacier after this, like the, the pandemic really threw a curveball in your plans, right? Yeah. And that, like we, I mean, Mirage Static came out in 2018 and, mm-hmm. um, it was a kind of a slow build, but it felt like it was, um, it kind of reached a point where enough people were, had heard it that this next one, there was some excitement around it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was the hope. And we, yeah, the momentum got kind of interrupted right in the middle. Um, <clears throat> we'd hoped to, or I'd personally hoped that it would have come out in, I think like um, 2020 spring or summer. And that obviously, wasn't going to happen so yeah we'll see it's I'm curious to I kind of readjusted and I went back to school and I went back to the park and um um, I'm really curious to see sort of how it what's what's left when we put it out um yeah 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 yeah. And, and this album I mean I don't know like look if this album is what came out of that pain like man like it was worth it because it, it's really amazing and and we can like start talking about Ch- like chino queen for example right and that amazing 
that amazing video that you filmed in LA, you know, uh, you know, with, with your, with your team there. Tell us a little bit about this song because it's so playful. Tell, first tell us what is a Chinook wind, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Um, a Chinook wind is a, it's a, like a weather event that happens in Montana. I think it happens in throughout the Rockies. Yeah. It's just, and I couldn't explain what is happening or why, but um, it's this warm, dry wind that is kind of at the end of the winter when it's it's still really cold weather. You'll get this phenomena where the there's this just kind of gust of hot, dry wind for like sometimes a couple of days. Um, it right. Comes the east side of the mountains, and it really messes with the the trees that are they kind of go into dormancy during the winter, and so this like all this warm air kind of tricks them into thinking it's spring already yeah and, um it's it's not there may still be another month or so of really cold weather and so they'll once they kind of start to wake up and it gets cold again they can get really um think it can sort of damage the the trees and it can kill them and so that was the sort of metaphor that the the story's built the song is built off of um <clears throat> because i had broken up or been broken up with by somebody and then a month later, she asked me on this date and I sort of like, <clears throat> I knew it was still winter, the emotional winter, and I should stay in <laughs> dormant and protected. And uh, of course I didn't. And I woke up and I, uh, I embraced the new unseasonably warm kind of change of feeling. And then, of course, um, <clears throat> ended up going nowhere and I got yeah. just kind of hurt all over again. So is that enough. Is that interesting? I and what I mean is like, look, I'm not an artist, but you know, love the creative process. And you know, I guess non-artists, when there's a breakup or when there's a heartbreak or whatever it is, we all go through it. But you kind of like let like time heal all wounds, if you will. Is it is it interesting, like when you're a musician or when you're an artist, that like some of these like pains are kind of like stamped in art forever? Is that that's got to be an interesting thing, right? Yeah, my mom worries about that, that I just am like, you know, petrifying um, these these painful moments. But that's not how, I mean, by the time I, I, by the time I'm writing about something that's happened, I've already, the writing is like the end of, of processing it for me. And yeah. so I'm not really struggling with what happened or why, or I'm not confused about it. It's still painful to some degree, but writing it is kind of a, uh, signal for me that I've I've worked through it and I've been able to make sense of it and so and then and then continuing to sing the song it uh yeah I don't know it, it doesn't feel that way it doesn't trigger me or it doesn't make me super um sad again it's it's there's something empowering about it so I don't know exactly yeah. how it works but the act of writing it is for me if I can wrap my head around it enough to write a song it means that I've I've kind of worked past it yeah yeah that's that's great that's great. Like, that's when you're like over it. And, and speaking of your songwriting, Isaac, I mean, you lived in a bunch of places. You lived in LA, you now live in Montana, you lived all over. How do you compare the songwriting process? Like, basically, does the songwriting process, whether it matters if you're in Nashville, Montana, LA, or wherever, is it like inside of the artist? Or does the city like really play a part in it? Like, or the town? I think, I don't know. I think everybody's different, obviously. But um for me, I did kind of struggle to, to write in when I was in LA and I'm not sure, I never really was able to figure out exactly why. Um, something about just being, you know, living in LA, I, I lived with three other people. I lived in kind of a bunch of different places and there's something to be said just for having the, the space and the privacy that is a little bit easier to come by in sure. Montana, for example. Um, but I don't know. I think there's an adjustment period. I, I definitely was a little bit more just kind of uneasy and um, I wouldn't say uninspired, but I just was like not sure where I wasn't as used to, um, you know, like the in Montana, I'm kind of comfortable with like metaphors that have to do with um, like Chinook wind, like uh, right. mountains and nature. And um, that's sort of a cliche, but um, it's sort of true too. in LA. It was a whole different sort of palette and in this album, finally, I feel like I, I have written some songs that are inspired by L.A., about L.A., about things that happened in L.A., but um, it took a while for me to kind of um, get used to writing about L.A. in the way that I, or using L.A. in my songs in the way that I, I had sort of figured out for Montana a long time ago. Yeah, that's so interesting. How many years were you in L.A., Isaac? 
I w- it was kind of on and off for about uh, four or five years. Four or five years. Because you would go back to Montana, right? Yeah, yeah. I usually came back to Montana in the summers for at least a little bit. Um, so yeah, it was really bouncing around. And that's what this album kind of captures is just those those years where I was in between places and I was trying to figure out. I mean, I still am. I haven't. I haven't settled on anything, but just um, where I belong and and what the things I love about, you know, go to LA and I miss Montana, go come back to Montana and I miss LA. So the there's a lot of songs that sort of deal with that. Totally. Um, I mean, Blue, Pi- Blue Pilot, for example, that's a heck of a tune. Um, right. a, a song like that, like Blue Pilot, you know, where the songwriting, I like all the lines are just like incredible. Um, I forgot the hook right now, but when, when you're writing a song like that, like Blue Pilot or something, like, is, is that like an idea that comes to you, like when you're working at Glacier Park, Isaac, and maybe you have to like record it into your phone or like, where does something like that come from? These are genius concepts here. That one, I, I mean, that one, I think it's so, a lot of these songs are so connected to, I mean, just like things that, I mean, the absolute truth of what happened and and that one is it's about um that same relationship that sort of imploded really quickly and I had been given a a notebook and a a pen um for a Christmas gift and I was just like oh I'm never gonna write another breakup song again this is it and I'm gonna (laughs) fill this notebook with like all these happy songs and a month or a week later I was writing I was using that same notebook to write the breakup song of or, you know, just break up, <clears throat> whatever, blah, like, yeah, just outpouring um, from that relationship. And so that one just, that's something that just probably ended up, you know, you kind of sometimes these like things just happen to you. And once you're thinking about songs and looking for songs, it just like, they jump out of you and you know that that's a seed for something. And I think it probably, you know, it was probably a few months later that I actually was able to put it into a song but it was there just the thing that happened um was sort of in the back of my head and I was I knew that it had potential to be just a, another kind of little metaphor song yeah yeah I I did try to write some stuff when I was in the woods but it's I had a lot of melodies I'd come up with and not have a phone or anything to record it with and I would promise myself that I wasn't going to forget and then just the next conversation I'd have with somebody, it would be gone. So I, I did lose a lot of what I thought were good melodies, but who knows? At yeah. The time. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, another song that like we love is the, the, the finale, In the Light of a Love Affair. Uh, you know, it's a great song. And, it, and it's, it's actually like a really, really perfect way to end the album. And it got us thinking about when you were studying English at the University of Montana. Uh, what do you remember from like those times when you were, you know, growing up and you kind of had a double major right? like in creative writing but also like your nature forestry yeah. like what do you remember like about crafting like who you became as a songwriter from then well like I said um I think a lot of my kind of metaphors and figurative language yeah. came from sort of an interest in um nature and and there were some things that I that came up in school that I sort of like glommed onto um and then I just there were things in studying English that um, I read a ton, but I never really considered how how things are, <clears throat> how stories are put together. And specifically, I remember one one class where we talked about um, <clears throat> metaphors and the idea of using. I mean, you can use you can use any metaphor um, to describe to help describe something, but if you use metaphors that are kind of from the same world as um what like kind of the, the subject of what you're trying to talk about yeah that was like a new thing and that's something that came up in uh, big sandy one of those songs where i kind of came up with like an overarching like <clears throat> metaphor that was the um montana's like an ocean and then or just an, that idea and then every metaphor in the song sort of refers back to that so that was something yeah. that like i remember from a uh a creative writing class in college that um, has stuck with me in songwriting. And I don't think otherwise I necessarily would have uh, come across it. Yeah, totally. And I like another thing I noticed, like j- just from the 2018 record to this one, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is just like my observation is that 
the, the character, whether it's you or like the first person, you've become almost more aware also of like the growth and maybe the, the faults that you had before and like, you know, how like you're not, per, you're, you're not a perfect being. Am I correct in that? Am I wrong? No, I think that's, I think um, <clears throat> part of that comes from, you know, the first having an album out there, Marriage Static, that's full of breakup songs. Mm -hmm and then writing another album yeah. and there's still breakup songs and just being a little bit worried that, uh, you know, that I'm just complaining or that I'm, I'm blaming these people who are in my life that, uh, you know, I made me sad because relationships end and it wasn't their fault and it was, or it was as much their fault as my fault. And more often than not, it was my fault. And so it's like, I think it was just, um, I don't know if I was more aware of it or, um, I mean, I think I was just that I, I wanted to make sure that I'm not, you know, vilifying people just because a relationship ended and I got sad, like Definitely. it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to go that way. So there's, I try to be as self-deprecating as necessary. <clears throat> and sometimes, oh, yeah, I mean, and, you, and you do it, you do it perfectly. I second and think you're being so good with your time. And I think you're going to play a song for us, which we're really excited. But I want to ask you, lastly, about the best Westerns, because, yeah. you know, it was, you know, before you were a solo artist and, and my audience is going to love you as a solo artist. But you had a, a great period there with this great band you founded in 2011, the best Westerns. I mean, and you had a pretty solid following. Basically, how do you look back on that band now? And, and do you ever like see maybe like collaborating again with them or or maybe creating like a new group like how do you compare this experience well i we were a, a band that um, was i played with a lot when i was in college and everybody lived in missoula hmm. and since then everybody's just kind of everybody's still in montana but we've all live in different towns now and so that's sort of I mean, that's the biggest difference. That's why I moved to Nashville was like, I had fun playing, writing songs and playing um, with the best Westerns. And then it just became apparent that they had different priorities and we weren't going to ever like tour or yeah. um, make it a, a real thing. And so that's kind of the, the distinction between that project and um, what I do now as a solo artist but we do still play together when we can. Everybody's still in the state cool. and we play weird little shows around Montana, maybe two or three times a year if we're lucky. So um, it's a really fun bar band. We don't practice a lot. Um, so <laughs> it's always loose in a really fun way, but that's kind of been our brand. So nobody yeah. seems to matter or mind too much. Love um, it. Yeah. Well, Isaac, I mean, you've said it all. I, this, what an album. We can't wait to hear it live, honestly. Like, it's going to be such a fun live experience. So really stoked for it. Um, why don't you take us away with a song, if you, if you don't mind? Yeah, of course. Um, well, thanks for the, the questions, too. I really yeah, it. oh, with... absolutely. It's a fantastic album. <clears throat> I'm going to do, I thought I'd just do the first song, Passenger Seat. Um, okay. Easier on the acoustic sounds good all right isaac could i give you any guitar and you would make it sound good you know just, uh -huh. can, can i give you like a 20 dollar guitar and you with your skills you can kind of like make it like make a thing out of it or do are you very specific with the quality and, and the stuff no i'm not really specific i've been playing the same guitar um that my friend johnny fritz gave me for probably six years and um it's a fine it's a great guitar but it's really mid-range i've been kind of on the lookout for like my lifetime guitar but it hasn't <laughs> it hasn't quite shown up um yeah and i don't know i don't really i don't care i'm not like a gear guy too much at cool. all so as long as it doesn't hurt my fingers <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah all right you can hear all right yeah okay perfect. I was only looking for someone to pull on the end of my sleeve Help me out of my coat while I was driving I almost stopped hoping it would ever be true love In the passenger seat It's 
Trying to get free of my fantasies I was holding off, holding out hope For long gone, long gone girls like you Who would tie up the phone for someone more like me That's trying to get through Then you fell out the bottom of the stairs Unmistakably warm in the eye Looking at me like we both agreed The time was finally right Swear I never saw it coming If I had I would have messed it up already But you got me good with a left hook Swore my good eye up in love Again, enough years go by, loveless. I stop planning my life alone with a dog all named Ramona. Then I has a dozen half a phone. It'll be good to put this behind me. All the strain and desperate hope But the odds all change in the instant It takes a gaze to fly across the room I could tell them by the way you held my eye Tell them by the way you moved Walking up to me in a straight line Blazing with the warmth unknown I guess that I was dreaming be like this, but it's so dangerous to hope that you'd fall in love with me again. Cause I was only looking for someone to pull on the end of my sleeve, help me out of my coat while I was dry. Stopped hoping it would ever be true love in a passenger seat. Amazing, yeah. Isaac. My Thank chills you. have chills, man. That was awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks so much for your time, Isaac. See you around. All right, appreciate it. Bye. Yeah.